Mr. Possible Lee. All right, so today we're doing sound waves, and we're starting with it. We have a series of videos, kind of goes from sound waves onto radio waves, onto digital waves, but it's all tied together. <laughs> I don't have the air conditioner going, so there's not, I'm not turning the heater on. I think it's stuffy in here too, but What's, is it hot? Uh, not necessarily hot, but air needs to be circulating. Squid game. All right, stop talking and listen. Why is everything around us generating sound? Also, there are a whole variety of sounds. Running water, a cell phone, music, someone's voice. Hello. The list of sounds you hear throughout a given day is endless. But when you are shown what sound looks like, inevitably you are shown something like this, which sounds like this. And to me, that doesn't make much sense because you never hear that sound in the real world. In this branch episode, let's try to better understand what is sound. <laughs> let's start with a simple sound. That was popping an inflated polka dot balloon. This polka dot balloon is filled with high pressure air particles and when popped, all these particles rush out and hit the adjacent air particles. Those particles hit the next set of adjacent air particles, and so on, thereby creating an expanding shell of air particles just bouncing into one another. This is called a pressure wave or sound wave. Alright, pressure wave, backslash sound wave. First thing you need to write down, then I'll back back up. But before I back back up, who can tell me? What have they just told us? Charlie? That's what the, they told us? Not exactly. Okay, you're close. You're close. So the balloon has pressure, pressurized air in it, right? Y'all should be experts at this popping balloon. So when the balloon, so this is how part, this is how sound particles move. So that uh, all the particles will hit one another. So they hit the adjusting air particles. So it's kind of like the demo that we did where we lined everybody up, and I tapped one person, and then they bumped into the next, and the next, and the next. But you all came back to your original spot unless you were acting silly. Right? Wait, the particles hit adjusting air particles, hit other adjusting air particles. That's the first thing you need to put down. After sound waves, particles hit the adjusting air particles. You're not going to write down exactly what's up there. You don't have to put when it popped because that's not the only noise we hear, is it? Mm -hmm. But this still explains how all sound moves. So, particles hit adjusting air particles. Has everybody got that? Mm -hmm. And hit the adjacent air particles. Those particles hit the next set. <coughs> Those particles hit particles the next, hit the set, next set. And the next set. And so on. <coughs> the 
particles and so on, thereby creating an expanding shell of air particles just bouncing into one another. This is called a pressure Thereby creating a shell of air particles just bouncing into one another. But remember, as they bounce or vibrate, they're hitting the next set, and then the next set hits the next set, and then the next set hits the next set. And that's how it moves through the air. One another. This is called a pressure wave or sound wave. This wave travels throughout the room and eventually the bouncing air particles apply a force to your eardrum. Which... Okay, so the sound wave travels throughout the room or the area, wherever you are. You don't have to put room. Just put that it travels and it gets to your eardrum and it causes a force. It applies a force to your eardrum. It applies a force to your eardrum. I got it up there now, Mr. Smith. Eventually the, the particles, the bouncing particles apply a force to your eardrum. Everybody got that part to that part? Anybody confused or have questions at this point? Ms. Flowers, you look confused. Yes, Okay, so now we've applied a force to our eardrum, right? Everybody got that? Apply a force to your eardrum, which causes parts of your internal ear to move. Which causes the parts of your ear, or just you can just put it causes the internal ear to move. If you want to do verbatim, it's on the board. Which causes the parts of your internal ear to move. Then your brain processes this motion in your internal ear and it tells your cognition that. All right, what did it say processed it? Your brain. Your brain. So your brain processes that movement of the inner ear. Then your brain processes the motion of your inner ear. Ear, and it tells your cognition that, oh, this motion in my ear sounds like a... All right, then it tells, it tells you what the sound is. It could be a pop or it could be any sound, but however you want to write it down. So let's recap. Before we recap, um, how many in here thought that you heard with your ears? Raise your hand if you thought you heard with your ears. But we just found out we really don't hear with our ears, do we? Now we have our ears, we hear the ears, okay, so what it starts is the air particles are bouncing off each other and they move to you and it gets to your eardrum, which causes a force on your eardrum, which causes your inner ear to move, right? And that sends signals to your brain. So technically, what do you hear with? Brain. Your brain. Your brain distinguishes, through depending on the waves, what that sound <coughs> is. So, 
But if you didn't have it, we are going to make you buy it. Would you let me buy it? <laughs> so, how many of you have watched the news and they're interviewing some lady whose neighbor got shot? And, she'll, and she says, well, at first I thought it was a balloon popping. Have you ever heard those interviews? Yeah. Or hear people say that? Yeah. And then I hear it a couple of more times and I realized it was a gun. Uh, a lot of the people that they interview from the school shootings and stuff, that's what they'll say. Well, at first I thought it was a, a, a balloon popping, which is what your brain thought it was at first, which is why that's what you thought it was first. But then it goes bang, 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 and your brain's like, oh, wait a minute. Don't say I'm right. Maybe that's not right. Maybe it's a gun or you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so the sound goes, moves through the air, bounces off each other, gets to your eardrum, puts pressure on your eardrum. Your eardrum makes your inner ear move. The inner ear sends signals to your brain and your brain tells you what the sound is that you just heard. So are we hearing with our ears or our brain? Brains. Our brain. That is, you're born deaf and how does that work? Yeah. So the child's not the and you don't have a brain. You're deaf. You're well, usually if you're born deaf, then you can't get to your eardrum. Usually, if you're born deaf, there is something that did not develop right, either in your eardrum or your inner ear. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? So now they've came out with those cochlear devices, and you and you see people that's had the cochlear device where they have it implanted up here on their head. Yeah. They have like a thing that they can hear. Okay, so that is taking the place of either their eardrum or their inner ear or both. And it's doing the process it's supposed to do and sending it to your brain so that they know what it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, so if you're deaf, you still hear like a noise, you just can't process what it is. No, means. you can feel vibrations. If you'll notice a deaf person, when they listen to music, they always stand by the speaker so they can, and that's how they know what the beat is or the rhythm, is because they can feel the vibrations. Or they'll put their hand on top of the speaker, but, but if, if, you're, if they're deaf, they'll always do that. Or there's deaf DJs. <laughs> yes, Charlie. <laughs> how does it work if like, you're not born deaf, but like, you go deaf? Okay, so usually when you go deaf, what what causes that? Very seldom do you just all of a sudden go deaf, right? Usually, usually a person who becomes deaf later in life, it's due to either an injury or it's due to a sickness. So, like Helen Keller, she was not blown, she was not born deaf. Okay, she got sick as a young child and had, oh, what was it she had? Which one? Oh, that one girl with the, uh, she's the blind and deaf girl. Yeah, that, that like, one girl, like the, uh, cows. Oh, okay. Okay, so she, anyway, due to whatever the sickness is right now, I can't think what it was that she had. Was it diphtheria? Uh, it was, what was it? Tuberculosis. No, it wasn't tuberculosis. Do you think there's someone else? Meningitis? Was it meningitis, maybe? Anyway, it caused her to have extreme high fevers or temperatures. Okay? And they couldn't get it down. That's the reason when you start running a fever, your parents start poking pills in you to get it down. Because if your fever gets too high, it can cause damage to your body. It can cause brain damage. It can cause, it depends on where the fever decides to go and what it decides to do or which part of your bar, part of your body might be more vulnerable than another part of my body. So the high fevers caused her to lose her sight and her hearing. So the fever messed up her inner ear or her eardrum, okay? Same way with it messed up what causes you to see, yes. That's for a, that's that's like called braille. 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 And that's how they read. There's books that's done with those little dots. Each 
Okay, so like you have, we have our alphabet, right? Yeah. And in sign language, we have signs for all the letters, right? Yeah. You have like A, B, C, D, E, right? Well, in Braille, dots, so many dots in whatever location they're in represents the different letters. Yes. You're born deaf. From what language do you think in? <laughs> I I don't have an answer to that. We'll have to research that. Okay. That's the reason there's sign. sign language. I guess you think in sign language. I don't know. Anyway, so that's how that's how that all comes about. So you can either be born deaf, which means you had a a birth defect which means your ears didn't develop, the inside ears didn't develop like they should. Or you could have an accident and it caused that to happen. I've known people who, and I've not known, but I've heard of people that when they get a real bad ear infection, if they don't take care of it, then they have, my son is one of them. My son, if you tested his hearing, he would test legally deaf. When he was a kid, he had ear infections constantly. And I wanted to put tubes in, and the doctor kept saying, no, I see at that time, they decided that putting tubes in wasn't the best thing to do because they cause scar tissue and it messes, it, it affects their hearing. So the doctor decided to treat it with low doses of antibiotics for a long period of time. And then when he got into school, he couldn't hear anything so then we took him back to a different specialist and that specialist went in and cleaned out his ears it was full his ears were full of infection and gook and stuff but what was weird it never it didn't hurt him it he never had a fever with it the only reason I knew when his ears was hurting he was starting messing with them okay so due to all of that infection and stuff it messed up his hearing he's not deaf but he went totally deaf, but he does, if you do a hearing test, he does um, have enough hearing loss that they consider him legally deaf. Uh, he reads lips a lot. He, uh, it affected his speech. He mumbled, mm -hmm. drives me crazy. Uh, we put him in speech when he was younger. Uh, after having tubes for five years, they took him out. And then when he got into college, we went back to have a massive ear, ear infection. So we had to go back in and put tubes in his ears. So when we're at the doctor's office, there's like all oh, these little kids and then there's pink. <laughs> but anyway, so I mean, there's different things that can, that can create hearing loss. I was Let's rewind, go back, and take a deep dive into what this sound wave looks like. You need to pay attention, even, even though I'm not saying right now. It's a relatively now. simple sound. When we take a cross section and zoom in, on a molecular level, we can see the complex pattern depicting how the air particles are bouncing into one another. See how this they're bouncing? This pattern is produced within a tenth of a second after the balloon is popped. You may ask, where does this pattern come from? Well, the high pressure air particles rush out and generate a high pressure wave. But when they do, they create a low pressure void in the balloon's center. The air particles rush back in to fill this void, thereby generating a low pressure wave. When the particles rush back in to fill this void, they rush in too much, thereby creating a second high pressure zone. The cycle repeats itself, and each time it does, it generates a high pressure and low pressure wave, which can be graphed. This graph shows the pressure waves, or waveform, produced by popping a balloon. The vertical axis is pressure, or the amount of force the particles bounce into one another. The horizontal axis is time. These high points in the waveform are called compressions. Nick. All right, so on this is a, what they call a line graph, right? Anyway, so you have your pressure on your uh, vertical line, and then the timeline is on your uh, horizontal line. 
and then you have your, your sound waves coming in. And if you notice, there's peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. So every place there's a peak, that's called a compression. It's called the, the tall peaks, the ones above the timeline are called compressions. Pressure, or the amount of force the particles bounce into one another. The horizontal axis. They don't have to be exact, guys. This is time. These high points in the waveform are called compression. All right, so up the top, you're going to write compressions and then point to your high points. Now you notice there's high and low points. Okay? The high points are called compression. Has everybody got to that point? No. no. All right, I'll give you a few minutes to get there. Yeah, you don't have to have the same number of lines they have. You could just have a vertical and a horizontal because it all has to do with, um, it just has to do with the peaks and valleys. That will show peaks and valleys. Compression is the high thing. Compression is the high. So that's when the wavelength is at its loudest point, it's what they call a compression point. Okay? Now there's going to be a word for when it comes down, too, right? If there's a word for it going up, there's always a word for it when it's down. What goes up? Must come down. Must come down. Must come down. Must come down. All right, so everybody got this now? No. Yes. Who said no? I or write faster. It does not have to be perfect. Every time I see one of y'all stop and erase something, unless it's a word you're spelling out and you miss, like you made the letter so bad you can't read it, when you're taking notes, you can't worry about erasing. You gotta get it on that paper as fast as you can because after this year, you're not gonna have a teacher that stops and says, hey, write this down. Listen here. All this chart. Is it the particles are compressed. You need to listen to the video. The low points in the waveform are called rarefactions. Alright, so the low points are called rarefractions. Has anybody ever heard that word before? Dark. Science has some of the weirdest words, right, that we hardly yes. ever hear in the world. I've never heard it before either until I was in science and really kind of forgot about it until I started researching for this lesson. Rare fractions, those are the low Therefore, points. The air particles are more spread out and not bouncing around as much, and thus have a lower pressure. Both so they the have a lower pressure. So the compression has higher pressure, the rare fractions have a lower pressure. And particle animation helps to visualize sound, which as we know is invisible to our eyes. So we can't see sound, right? The measurements are taken at a single point in space. In this case, the pressure was measured by a microphone. In order for your speakers to duplicate this sound, the diaphragm in your speakers just have to move in a similar fashion. The entire sound takes one tenth of a second for your speakers to duplicate. This visualization is just the first section of the overall pattern. So this is an example of how your brain, how, the, how it works in the brain. So the, the particles, the noise sound particles are moving through the air and it gets to the microphone, which would be what? Your eardrum and your inner ear, right? And it changes it from that into some type of signal, right? And it sends the signal to your brain, which is what the microphone does. The microphone picks it up sends it to the speaker, and then the speaker turns it into what you're supposed to hear. Okay? So that's what your brain does, right? Your brain says, oh, that's what I'm supposed to hear. That's what I heard. All right, so this is just another example of how sound works. So the sound waves has to have something that transmits, it transmits it or changes it into, back in from the waves into the sound. Does that make sense? Yes. So, when, but like when somebody's talking, do we not do this until 10 seconds later? Or well, it's like, not 10 seconds later. Not it's 10 like a tenth of a second. 
Like she couldn't even have her spine. Yeah. No, but like, do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, that's how it works. Yes. So, but why is there like, why would you talk though? You're literally talking. Have you ever tried talking to Dr. Mitchell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a good psychologist? A lot of kids who have to have speech is because they don't move their tongue and their mouth like it should. Now we're talking about your voice uh, and not your hearing, uh, right? Which is not the subject we're on. We're on hearing, sound waves. That's In just this quick sound, there were about 50 of these sessions. If we slow down the sound to four seconds, you can hear some of the cycles between compression and rarefaction. Most sounds last so much longer than the this duration. Listen to the to it again and see if you can pick it out. Pick out the highs and the lows. Of these cycles. If we slow down the sounds to four seconds, you can hear some of the cycles between compression and rarefaction. Most sounds last much longer than this quick duration, so in visualizations of sounds, we usually see the squished version of this graph, which looks like this. Let's consider another sound. Here is a running faucet. The moving water molecules apply a force to the nearby air particles, thereby causing the air particles to bounce into one another, thus creating a sound. sound wave. Right? Which we just the that. sound wave propagates throughout the room and hits your eardrum or a microphone, and the waveform looks like this. The difference between the balloon popping and the running faucet is the way the air particles are moved, which can be seen in the shape of the waveform. Another difference is that the... Okay, so the pop of a balloon lasted what? 0.1 seconds. That would be a tenth of a second. <laughs> I didn't know that. Did you see that? Oh, so so you're right. right. We're basically talking about the Okay, so in the water... You can continually hear the water until somebody turns it off, right? Yeah. So it's considered a continuous. This would be considered, they don't really have a name for it, but it's continuous. just like a bang, of, it just at that moment. A moment of sound, not continuous means it goes on and on, right? Because like once a balloon pops, can it pop again? No. No. But if you turn your water on, it, it hopefully if you paid your water bill or your electricity is <laughs> working, your water will keep running until you turn it off, right? Okay, so that's considered continuous. So you need to know the difference. You need to know what a continuous sound is versus the other. So while the rays have a hand, who can give me another example of a tenth of a second sound? Charlie? A gunshot. A gunshot. Smith? Yeah. Caught it. You had your hand up next. A thud. There you go. Oh. Baseball bat hit the baseball. Yeah. That's good. I hadn't had that one yesterday. Michaela? A clap. If you just clap once, it's not. It's done, right? But if you clap. Yes. I got one. All right, now give me some examples of sounds. Okay. 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 Okay.